Welcome back to stage three of the Element Night Runner build. So you can see, I've got some new things laid out in front of me. Pretty excited about this stage. And for the keen eye, you may notice I have added a little paintwork already to the side panels and to the rear. And I mentioned in the last build, I was gonna hold off on some stickers because I had a little more uh, graphics in mind and this is kind of what I was thinking here. That side panel is kind of molded already, just had a good line to it. It made sense to maybe uh, make an accent there, especially uh, what I'm thinking there with some uh, sponsor logos. So anyways, that's the starting point here. And uh, you also notice this uh, Club 5 tent is disconnected. And that is because now they actually make one that is specifically sized for the Night Runner. So this is uh, quite a bit smaller, more the scale of the plastic one that comes with it. So I'll compare these here in a bit, but it's quite a bit smaller. So maybe they saw my video and thought, hey, we'll make a specific Night Runner piece. And speaking of Club 5, they've actually made a lot of specific Night Runner parts. So they've got this sweet dual exhaust with stainless tips. So I will be replacing the plastic uh, MagnaFlow that comes with it and putting uh, a MagnaFlow dual exhaust on there. And then they have some swivel mirrors, which uh, these mirrors have always been a little suspect. Three posts, but two of them are pinned and one of them's not. Um, anyways, these will actually, looks like they secure through the door, but then the mirror can actually swivel. And then I've actually got a tailgate uh, 3D molded handle here. So I'll have to cut into the tailgate and mount that, which is awesome because the sticker is off center slightly and it's bugging me this handle since I got the truck. So we're going to pull that off and replace it. And then to address a little more front bias weight, I'm going to add some weighted hexes here. I may go just front with these. Uh, these are factory team. They're made for these Enduro wheels, the plastic wheels. And then I've got these Samix brass lower shock retainer caps. So uh, these may go all the way around. I don't know, I'm just going to have to see what the weight is, but I wanted to tune it uh, a little more. Uh, and you can see I've got some nice shackles and uh, a fair lead here. And you may be wondering what that's for. We'll get to that in a second. Um, this little piece is a 3D printed piece I got off of eBay. And as you can see, I've already painted that up. So I won't mention the seller since this is branded. I don't want to get them in trouble, but I'm sure you can search and find it. So a nice little 3D piece. Um, I don't have a printer, so I can't make my own. And uh, the last little thing here, you guessed it, some more Artful Dodgers. So let's take a peek in here. This is something I pre-ordered and I've had sitting here for a while. Kind of waiting to get some more parts for a full stage, but I'm very excited about it. This is a metal tube bumper with bash plate, winch mount, and it's got the high style uh, kind of tube bar stinger. They make two versions. They make one where this piece is lower. Maybe it comes across here but this thing is going to look awesome so we'll pull off the DeMillo plastic which also looks great but uh, 
We'll get some more scale realism and a little bit of weight up front as well with that. So that's why I've got a few pieces to dress that up. And the reason I don't have four of these, we'll get to in a minute. So next up, let's check this guy out. What else could I be getting from these guys that I don't already have? Well, this one I, I couldn't help myself. Remember, we already put on the full stainless skid package, but they came out with these more scale accurate, I say TRD on them, Toyota Racing Development. They've got the wraparound protection, got kind of the little grill. The rest of it, I believe, is the same full length protection, but that will replace this more Baja style straight edge centerpiece. And then all the other ones I've got, I'm keeping the same. It's just this middle long one I'm replacing. So, wow, that's gonna go great with the new Toyota grill. So this thing will be fully transformed now with the rear badging and the front grill. And this, all I need is some official badging, but I actually kind of like the Night Runner. You know, don't want to take away everything. So anyways, that's uh, the start of the build. Not sure what we're gonna jump into here first. Um, we'll see. Okay, the grill is on. Only broke one post. Those 3D printed posts have no flex, so my advice would be open up the holes with a reamer a little bit. I should have. Um, I was working it in and I guess the Lexan flexed and it just snapped one, but uh, they're all in there. Um, could always use some shoe goo if Something else pops out, but it seems to be holding fine with those plastic washers. Got both the mirrors on, pretty simple. They could probably do with a longer uh, piece of hardware. This one stripped out. Like I guess I bumped it and it stripped out. So I put some uh, uh, nylon tape around the threads to tighten it a little and that helped, but um, it could it could go up in that mirror further so i may try to find one that'll get up in there and bite um i kept the originals who knows we'll see how well those hold on but they definitely are cool can fold them in so now i've got both tents out here you can see and uh just wanted to show you kind of the size difference in these guys so this new one sits basically exactly the rack dimensions and it's uh, a lot shallower as far as the height. So I'm gonna get this guy strapped on the rack and uh, we'll get a look at it. All right, downsized tent complete. I gotta say that looks nice. Nice and low appropriate scale for the truck. This one was a little bit big, but it, it provided a little extra padding if, if needed. Um, this one definitely sits a little more low pro, but it sits exactly in that footprint of the rack. So it's a nice fit. So tent is looking good. The tailgate handle looks so sweet. So I think that's kind of wrapping up the body details minus some uh, stickers decals, but uh, I think we're going to move on to something more substantial. Well, first little hiccup here, I got to throwing these guys on and they would not fit with this body. They were getting covered by the back end of it. It's like, what's going on? And then I pulled out the tag, Element Enduro Sendero HD. So they sent me the wrong part. 
I just went and double checked my order and I did order the dual exhaust for the Night Runner, which are totally different than these. Um, so I just contacted them. So hopefully they'll ship me out the correct piece, but uh, no dual exhaust just yet. So we're gonna move on to something else. All right, bumper and skids are off. And I've got them both out here to take a look at the differences here. They both got the little Dodger eyes symbol etched in the front. There it is. And of course the TRD on this one, you can see how much wider it is. And a little less, uh, less of an approach angle because it comes up straight or down straight and then it breaks over. Uh, but just slightly less. And then wider coverage here comes with a wider spacer bar uh, than this one did. This is a little narrower. Of course, the center section is just straight on this one, whereas this one, it's kind of flared from that wide point. And then they added a nice little etched uh, logo as well on the back that this one does not have. And then this looks like the same little piece of hardware that I've already got installed right there in the middle, which I'll leave. And then I'll double check and see if this is the same. It probably is. Um, this is the bumper mount bracket in the front. And if you'll remember from last time running the stock bumper um, with the skid on, the bumper usually screws in from the bottom. So I flipped the bumper mount I think I flipped this piece from uh, Artful Dodgers and then I was able to pin the bumper from the top and I could screw in short screws on this guy from the bottom. So now I think I should be able to flip everything back correct since uh, the new bumper is going to mount uh, with metal brackets on slots to the side so I won't have to access any screws from underneath after the fact. So I think I can get that all put back properly. Um, so I'm gonna get this new one on and then uh, we'll jump over to the bumper and see if I get that fitted. All right, I went ahead and pulled this bumper bracket. Um, I've got this new one installed. Uh, you can see it's got a sloped face here. Uh, that was really the main difference, whereas this one is a square section. Uh, this one's a little shorter overall than that one, but I believe this one just has a 90 degree breakover where this one uh, comes up at a slope here. So that's accounted for in this piece. So that's enough to make me switch to the new piece. And then I'm not going to put this one on, like I said earlier. So I will install all of this and for some reason, the, it only came with two screws for the rear, so I'll take two of these. I can't remember if it only came with two last time. Um, I want to say there's only two installed uh, because two of them go in the transmission, and if you flip it, then you install the other two. So maybe I just added those two. I'm not sure. Um, needless to say, there's going to be four screws in the back. Um, so we'll get these installed and uh, see what this looks like on the truck and then we'll move to the bumper. Look at that. That is looking nice. Went on smooth. The only thing I had to do was put quite a bit of pressure to get these uh, installed. I got one by hand and then I had to really squeeze to get that other one in. And I, of course, I left all of these other ones loose. I just had them in their hole while I was doing that. And then I snugged it all down. Also had the bumper bracket, uh, you know, had these backed out so that was loose. Trying to give me as much play as I could to get it installed, but I think it looks really, really nice. Um, so I think it's on to the uh, bumper and uh, shouldn't be too hard here. We'll see. Bumper is on. Got the fair lead on. Got the shackles. 
and it's got forward backwards adjustment it's got vertical adjustment as well on those brackets so I've got it set uh, pretty high and tight to the body and uh, speaking of the body bumpers on grills off just taking the body on and off is enough to flex that and it popped all these pegs off so looks like I'm gonna bust out the shoe goo and uh, get the grill attached to the body well I called an audible here decided to go with something a little less permanent than the shoe goo and a little less messy um, and also just fitting this in um, it wasn't sitting flush on the back and it was kind of wanting to slip side to side so it worked out to have that little bit of gap taken up by the uh, width of the or the thickness of this double-sided um, so this is just 3m automotive strength pretty good stuff so i'm going to stick it on there that way if i do need to pull it off later um, thinking about lighting i'm not sure um, whatever i'll be able to do it rather than shoe gooing it. So this ought to hold it just fine. So we'll get it on there. All right, back in action. Easy peasy. I think that's gonna work out much better than those brittle pegs. Um, I was thinking the whole time, those are probably gonna break as soon as I hit something on the trail, but it took much less than that. So, um, but damn, it looks good. But that's the thing about 3D printing, you got to print it in the right plastic and that element plastic is pretty dang flexible and this stuff is not. So anyways, let's move on. Now that is one good looking front end, I've got to say. So I've got the grill reattached, bumper on, shackles, fair lead looking super good now the fj however front end not looking so good you can see there i took a nice little hit last time i was out and this 3d printed bumper continues to crumble so i lost a shackle and luckily i was able to retrace my steps and i've got it reattached here to my snatch strap so we are going to rob Peter to pay Paul, and I will switch those shackles over to the rear end bumper of this Night Runner. So I will get that uh, flip flopped and we'll be back. Rear shackles installed. I tell you what, there's no room to get fingers in there to twist those little through bolts. So the trick I used. Um, was taking a paper clip and sticking it through the eyelet here and then you can kind of twist and twist the shackle in the opposite direction and uh, get it threaded on there and then to spread the shackle in order to get them hanging loose like this I just slid it over the end of the tweezers and kept working it up until I got enough play so these things are loose and not sticking. But uh, transfer of shackles complete. Sorry, FJ. Well, it's been a little while for me, no time for you, but Club 5 finally got me the correct exhaust system for this Night Runner. So we're gonna take a look at what was initially intended to go in. Um, it's not super blown away with their customer service or shipping speed to replace the part they made a mistake on, but here's what we've got. So it looks like we've got a muffler assembly, and then we've got our dual exhaust with stainless tips and a little bit of mounting hardware here. So these ought to be uh, pretty quick to get on there. So we'll throw these on here and uh, then I'll show you the, all the stickers that I've put on since I've had all this time to wait on the exhaust. Quick look at the OEM muffler exhaust we'll be replacing. So pretty short, all black, 
and then we have kind of the exploded assembly laid out here of all the parts. Pretty self-explanatory. You know, connect both pipes into the muffler, snap that cover on, connect this one pipe, and then it mounts to the frame. And it looks like it will mount through the shock tower mounts to the frame. Those already have through bolts and they're backed up with nuts. So it looks like they're just giving you maybe longer through bolts and nuts to mount with. And then you can see this is a pretty severely warped mount here on one side. So that's unfortunate. So hopefully that won't be an issue getting these on. And shortly we'll have stainless, dual tipped, dual exhaust on this thing. All right, I've got it assembled, ready to hang. Just a clarification, um, I said that these were nuts here on the factory. It's actually not, it's uh, plastic. So these thread through the frame into plastic, uh, this brace. So these longer through bolts will just come on through and then you hang the exhaust and then you use the nut to secure the exhaust. So um, you can see here, I've got this passenger side shock tower removed. Uh, the factory exhaust mounts to this bottom leg that's part of it. So you've got to remove that to get this guy off and then uh, put that shock tower back on. And then of course the other side, you don't have that exhaust piece hanging down. So I don't think that one needs to come off. So I'll get this popped on here and we should be done. All right, install complete. Don't hang too low. Got these uh, backup nuts on here with some Loctite. So you just put those on at the very end. And uh, this took like 10 minutes if that to get on here. So super, super easy. Um, once you remove that stock exhaust that mounted here through the bottom, I went ahead and replaced that bolt. Um, I think it was an 18. I put a 16 in there to match this other side so it didn't stick out. Um, and then you've got your two shock tower uh, bolts each side that you're not going to use and then that one that attached the muffler up to the shock tower. So a few parts and a little hardware left over. So overall this looks pretty nice. Um, got some flex which is good. You want some flex. Um, so let me get the body on here and we'll get kind of a, a look at how this sits with everything uh, kind of a finished look here but so far nice little upgrade over that single uh, black plastic one there we go not hanging too low and you can see i made some sticker progress here i think those duels look great though so there's kind of where we're sitting right now I went ahead and added some uh, stickers to the tailgate and the Artful Dodgers on the bumper on each side to represent. And then I added a few to the uh, windows on each side. And then I got the sponsor stickers down on that lower side panel and the Artful Dodgers logo there on top of it. And then I added in the night customs, kind of badging here on each side. So I'm pretty happy with the look of it as it sits right now. I think the thing to do now is get it up on the scales, see where we ended up on weight, and then we can take those brass inner hubs and those brass lower shock retainer pieces and kind of set them around the truck and see what kind of adjustment we get and maybe tune this guy for a little more four corner weight, a little more front bias. Um, we'll just see where we ended up on the weight. We did shift a few things around and the metal bumper probably added a little. So I'm kind of curious to see uh, how we affected the overall. So let's get it on the scales. All right, so we've got a couple of little tuning weights here. So we're going to turn the scale on, see where we ended up, and then set those weights around the truck and kind of adjust the tuning 
and then uh, we'll see which ones we want to install where. Well, look at that. How did I get so lucky? So here we are, no weights added. This is the battery uh, that I run in this installed. So sitting at a 60-40 front ratio right now, which is great. 50-50 side to side, and this is uh, in ounces. So we're about 111 ounces. Flip to grams. So we are 3,147 grams. That is not too bad here. So I guess I may look at adding all of this just to get it a little more planted uh, for now. And then uh, further down the road, when I add items, I can always remove some of these if needed to balance it back out. So I'm going to throw each one of these on the scale and just see what the shock weight and what the hex is individually. All right, got both of them up here on the scales, the lower spring retainer on the left, and then the brass uh, wheel hex on the right or hub, I guess. So we're 6.7 grams for the spring retainer and 15.4 grams for the brass hub. We're back with the final weigh in here with all the weights installed all the way around. So we are at 3231 in grams here. And I believe we were 3147 uh, before and for some reason, we've dropped a 1% to the rear from our 60-40. Um, not sure why we added equal four corner weights, but uh, let's flip over here to ounces. We were at 111 before. So we're sitting at 114 now. So that's kind of the final weight here at this stage. I think that uh, Came out pretty good. I can't believe it hit 60-40 on its own, just out of the blue. All right, here we are, looking pretty good. And if you had a keen eye in the intro with the parts on the table, you'll notice there's one thing we haven't really looked at yet, and it was this little baggie, and I didn't even mention it in the intro. Um, these are some little ditch lights. Um, Got these off of AliExpress. They're the little cheapos with brackets you kind of fold up yourself. They look like uh, kind of like the little rigid industries. LED lights. So little metal brackets, little plastic pods. Uh, they come with a light. They were literally about $3 for the two, so I went ahead and ordered them when I was getting some other things. Um, debating putting them kind of in the ditch light position, but uh, not sure if I want to go ahead and do that now. I've got some lighting planned, uh, especially now with this new bumper. Uh, it looks like it's got some room for a light bar, some light pods up here, some mounting holes. Um, potentially a rack with lights, but definitely I want to get some uh, lights, maybe the My Trick and the Night Custom uh, light pods. So all of that I think is coming in the future. So I think I'm going to just hold off on doing any lighting. Um, you know, I, I lost the two fog lights that were in the stock bumper because this bumper didn't have any lights. So right now there's no lights in it, but I think it's just going to ride that way for now. So I think that's probably going to do it for this segment of the build. And I got to say, I'm very happy with how it came out. So let me know what you think in the comments. I'd love to hear if you like the graphics, if you dislike the graphics. I'm loving this thing. So lots more to come. A lot of electrical work, uh, potentially an interior. Maybe some uh, inner fender wells, but definitely some more scale detail for this guy. But I think for now I'm going to get it out and drive it. So, as always, thanks for watching and stay tuned for more.